their secret technology inside NFL balls no one knew about. There's a chip in the football? But there's so many more things you didn't know about the NFL, like how this ref blinded a player and ruined his career, or why the US military almost killed these fans. And first, did you know the NFL has a rule for when an entire team dies? See, in 1970, the Marshall University football team was flying home after a loss to ECU when, all of a sudden, they're playing clip some trees and crashed, leaving no survivors. So this tragic accident made the NFL wonder, what if this happened to one of their teams? And with that, they cooked up a crazy rule, the disaster draft which says that if 15 or more players on a team die, the league would host an emergency draft where the affected team would get to pick replacements from other NFL teams until their roster is filled. And depending on how many players die, not only will the league also cancel the affected team's entire season, but they'll even give them the first round pick in the next NFL draft. Yeah, the NFL's prepared for anything. And so is this player in number 19, because I bet you didn't know about the NFL kicker that's missing half of his foot. Yeah, this is Tom Dempsey, and even though he was born with no toes on his right foot or fingers on his right hand, Tom still played 11 seasons in the NFL, and he even made the Pro Bowl. That is legendary. But number 18 is embarrassing, because you probably didn't know that NFL players have some of the weirdest names ever. I mean, you got a dude named Ha Ha Clinton Dix, another literally named Guy Wimper, but the weirdest one of them all goes to Dick Buttkiss. Yeah, that's right, Dick Buttkiss. Man, this dude's gotta have the worst parents in the world. But number 17 has gotta be the worst fan in the world, because you probably didn't know that a fan once destroyed an NFL field. See, in 2022, a man hopped the gates of the Cleveland Browns stadium, stole a pickup truck, and started doing donuts on the NFL field. Really put a yeah. Yeah, and in the next game, you could literally see the tire marks all over the field. But the guy didn't get away with it. Cause a few weeks later, police identified the man as 21-year-old Anthony O'Neill and charged him with vandalism and breaking and entering. Yeah, that man was trucking crazy. But he's not the only one. Cause for number 16, you might not have known that the NFL has the craziest fans in all of sports. Seriously, you got people bathing in public before games, people turning their houses into shrines for their team. I mean, hell, one guy even spent an entire week making a Peyton Manning cornfield. But the wildest fans of them all are Bills fans. Cause the Bills Mafia isn't just crazy. They're flat out dangerous. Cause after the Bills won the AFC East Championship, fans stormed the field and then ripped the goalpost out of the ground. Jesus, those fans were committing crimes. But number 15 is suspect. Cause I bet you didn't know that the Dallas Cowboys website had men falling in love with each other. See, in 2007, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones realized that Cowboys.com was recently put on for auction, so he threw down 275 bucks, thinking that would seal the deal. But unfortunately, he ended up losing the auction. And uh, the person that won it had a different vision, because they turned Cowboys.com into a dating site for gay cowboys. But look, partner, I reckon some stories aren't a laughing matter. Cause the 14th thing you didn't know about the NFL is that penalty flags used to be deadly. See, in 1999, offensive tackle Orlando Brown was just doing his job, blocking other 350 pound men from getting to his quarterback. When all of a sudden, a referee threw a penalty flag that flew directly into Orlando's eye, causing him to go partially blind and completely derailing his career, having to sit out the next three years. But Brown had that dog in him, because after the incident, not only did he manage to fix part of his vision and revive his career, but he also sued the NFL and won, walking away with over 15 million. Damn, that right there is an eye for an eye. But number 13 will cost you an arm and a leg, because I bet you didn't know that Super Bowl commercials are so expensive, not even billionaires can afford them. See, every year, the Super Bowl is watched around the world by over 100 million live viewers. And with an audience that big, 
It means companies who want to advertise during the game gotta reach deep in their pockets. I'm talking over $7 million for a 30 second commercial. That is just absurd. In fact, even billionaires agree, because in 2023, after filming an entire Super Bowl commercial, YouTuber Mr. Beast decided 7 million just wasn't worth it. So he said screw it and released it for free. Damn, Mr. Beast stays winning. But NFL players stay thirsting. Because for number 12, there's no way you knew that NFL players are down bad. Yeah, I mean, you got Brett Favre getting caught texting a Jets reporter about his footballs. Or Zach Wilson allegedly hooking up with his mom's best friend. But no one's down further than former NFL wide receiver Chris Chambers. Because in 2009, after months of being stalked by a crazy fan, Chris did the unthinkable, divorcing his wife to marry the stalker. Now, for number 11, you probably didn't know about the NFL player that's missing a hand. Meet Shaquem Griffin, who, as a baby, was born with amniotic band syndrome, a condition that caused his left hand to become deformed and made his fingers nothing but tissue. And growing up, every day was painful. I mean, at just four years old, Shaquem's hand hurt so bad that he tried to cut it off with a kitchen knife to stop the pain. But thankfully, his parents stopped him just in time, and he had his hand surgically amputated the very next day. And life's been tough ever since. But Shaquem went on to achieve something that no one thought was possible. Cause with the support of his twin brother Shaquille, Shaquem made it all the way to the NFL. But look, it's top 10 time. So from here on out, you won't know nothing about the NFL. And first, I bet you didn't know that the NFL has a tradition of humiliating the last pick in the draft. See, each year in the draft, being the last pick earns you one of the most embarrassing nicknames imaginable, Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah, these guys train their entire lives and wait days to get drafted just to go up on stage and be publicly humiliated. Keeping the irrelevant tradition going, with the 262nd pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Brock Purdy, a quarterback from Iowa State. Go Niners! Man, Mr. Irrelevant, my name stinks, but it's still not as bad as number nine, cause I don't think you knew that the NFL uses thousands of cows to make their footballs. See, they call it pigskin, but since the NFL was founded, the league's been making their official game balls out of genuine cow hide, milking over 3,000 cows every season. And since 1920, they've used over 300,000 cows for footballs. That is utterly ridiculous. And so is number eight, because Antonio Cromartie set an NFL record for the most kids in NFL history. See, during his 10 seasons in the league, Antonio stayed busy on the field. But he was way busier off of it, because during his time in the NFL, he managed to have 14 kids with eight different women. And raising 14 kids is hard, but it's not the hardest part of parenthood for Antonio, because he's paying $330,000 in child support every year. Oh my god, his baby mamas are rich. And so is the NFL. Because for number seven, you might not have known that the NFL is the richest sports league in the entire world. See, every year, the NFL plays the fewest number of games across each major sport. So you'd think with less action, there'd be fewer dollars coming in. But no, well, their pockets stay thick. Because according to Forbes, in 2022, the NFL generated more money than ever before. Over $18 billion in revenue. That's more than the NBA and the NHL combined. And it's all because the NFL cares about every single dollar. Like in number six, the fact that the NFL would rather have players die than cancel a game. I swear, you got guys out here playing in 108 degree heat, damn near burning to death, or dudes playing in monsoons like a giant slip and slide. And in the dead of winter, a blizzard is just another day of work, especially for the Packers, cause they once played a game in Green Bay with 17 inches of snow on the ground. Yeah, uh, the league stops for no one, not even mother nature, but hey, uh, they've always been a little wild. Because for number five, I bet you didn't know that the NFL goes a little bit too crazy with their pregame shows. Like the Denver Broncos, for example. They kick off every home game by having their skydiving team drop down onto the field. Or how about the Seattle Seahawks, who are trying to gouge their fans' eyes out with an actual Seahawk that they release into the stadium. 
But then, there's the Tennessee Titans, who have, without a doubt, one of the most dangerous pregame shows I've ever seen. Cause they like to cap off the national anthem by having military helicopters fly right over the field. Watch as we slow down this video and the helicopters pass right beneath what appears to be a cable of some sort stretched across the stadium. They went under that cable. Well, if you hit the cable, especially a helicopter, uh, more than likely to crash. Man, that chopper almost sent people to heaven. But in number four, some people are trying to fly just as high. Cause you might not have realized that. In the NFL, dunking a football is strictly illegal. And it's all because of this guy right here. Six foot seven tight end, Jimmy Graham. See, in college, Jimmy played a little bit of football and basketball, but ultimately decided to go to the NFL, where his basketball talent came back to bite him. Cause during his first few seasons, Jimmy started celebrating every touchdown catch by dunking on the goalpost. Until one day, he dunked a little too hard. Yeah, Jimmy dunked so hard, he destroyed the goalpost. So just a few months later, the NFL made a brand new rule that banned dunking. Well look, we've hit the top three, which means we're about to see a whole new side of the NFL. And first, we gotta talk about one of the league's weirdest mysteries, the Madden Curse. Madden Curse. The Madden Curse. And it all started in 1998, when the Madden franchise featured their very first cover athlete, Garrison Hurst, who had just come off the greatest season of his career. But oddly enough, just a few months after becoming the face of Madden, Garrison made it all the way to the NFC Championship, where on the very first play of the game, he suffered a freak accident and completely shattered his ankle, missing the next two years of his career and marking the beginning of the Madden curse. And it's been downhill ever since because of the 22 different players who've been on the cover of Madden, 16 of them suffered devastating injuries immediately after, all thanks to the curse. Man, these video games are spooky. But number two is just crazy. Cause it's actually illegal to say Super Bowl. FBI, open up! Oh, no, 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 no. Let me explain, let me explain. Back in 1969, the NFL officially trademarked the phrase Super Bowl, which means any commercial use of the term by anyone outside of the NFL is strictly illegal. That's why commercials always refer to the Super Bowl as the big game. And it might sound ridiculous, cause it is, but the NFL's not playing around. Cause in 2008, a church in Indianapolis decided to host a Super Bowl party where you could buy a ticket and there'd be food for anyone that came. Well, the NFL got wind of their party and immediately shut it down by sending out a cease and desist letter to the church saying it was illegal to charge people to attend and they couldn't call it a Super Bowl party. Man, no one's safe from the NFL. But number one, what if I told you the NFL has a much bigger problem that might end the league for good? But before we get to that, we need to talk about the fact that NFL balls have computer chips inside them. See, in 2016, the NFL wanted to upgrade their game. They saw sports leagues around the world implementing technology to make their games better, like tennis and basketball with their replay systems. So the NFL implemented a computer chip with the purpose of tracking movement. But unfortunately, the tech just didn't really work. It was buggy, the tracking wasn't accurate, and no one really trusted it over the referees. So everyone kind of just forgot about it until 2023. It was Ravens vs Bengals, game all tied up in the fourth quarter, and the Ravens were at the one yard line with a chance to secure the lead when this quarterback tried to sneak a touchdown. Now, he ended up not even getting close. I mean, uh, that was pretty obvious. But for whatever reason, the NFL decided to clarify that in the craziest way possible, tweeting out, according to the chip in the football, closest the ball got to the end zone was 0.6 yards from the goal line. This was the first time that a functioning computer chip was confirmed to be in the ball, and people lost their minds. There's a chip in the football? Wait, 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 wait. Why did we you not know that tweet? before? Why did we not know that before? Bro, it's a what? chip in the ball. Honestly though, I think it's a good thing that's gonna help the game out, but I don't think it's enough to save the NFL from going extinct. See, over the last few years, the league has had a problem with players retiring earlier than ever. While players are suffering from ACL tears to shoulder injuries, there's one in particular that's doing more damage than any, injuries to the brain. 
Yeah, players are taking hits to the head like we've never seen, creating what's known as CTE, a disease caused by repeated blows to the head that literally shrinks your brain. And when that happens, players could suffer from memory loss, paranoia, and erratic behavior. That's why we're seeing players like Andre Waters, Antonio Brown, and Aaron Hernandez completely spiral out of control on and off the field. And other players like Andrew Luck retiring at just 29 for the sake of his mental health. I mean, uh, just last year, wide receiver Demarius Thomas was suffering from grade two CTE and actually died from it at only 33. And while those were just a few examples, a 2023 study tested 376 retired players and 345 of them came back with some form of CTE. That is 92%. So with so many young men having their lives ruined, the NFL has to find a solution, or else football could see less and less players on the field until eventually it goes extinct. But the NFL's not alone, because it turns out engineers have been developing an AI robot that could replace NBA players. Yeah, and this thing is insane. It set world records for never missing a shot, can dribble, hit half-court bombs. He's got the whole package. So if you wanna hear more, you need to click on this video right here. Meet the six foot 10 AI robot NBA players feed. And uh, this video's over, so might as well click it.